بدي بس شو اسمه بس بدي المفتاح مشان نطلع على البنايه هاي تا نشوف الالغام اللي فيها ما بدي الالغام عبيه هو بدي اياها مشان اطلع عليها كلها بهاي بهاي مليانه كلها الغام الدواعش هم اللي حطم بيها الالغام هاي كلها Why is no one else clearing these buildings? I mean, there's no organizations that they've asked to come here? I mean, I don't see. I see the world. They're the ones who are asking me. This is the security measures. The world. How dangerous is this work? Dangerous, a lot. I mean, dangerous. But the child doesn't understand. But I said, I will die better than the child who doesn't understand. The child who is small, the child who is small, doesn't understand the language. The day I come to my house. محطوط وصخ محطوط شغلة عليه محطوط تشيس زبالة. Eight months after the liberation of Raqqa, thousands of unexploded landmines still lie scattered across the city, planted by fleeing ISIS members, effectively booby-trapping the streets, businesses, and even homes of those civilians left behind. Residents say that aid organizations are taking too long to clear them, leading some to risk it all by taking matters into their own hands. Mal, eh eh. This is your neighborhood? Yes, I live in this house and there are a lot of things. Have people died in this area from mine explosions? What do you think of this chap who's just gone up there? Do you think he is brave? Do you think he is crazy? No, 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 no. Because this man is going to leave this house so that the world is going to die. Would you go in there? No, I'm afraid. <تصفيق> بيلي جيت واحد ايه واحد خليه يمشي وراي على الدعشة وين أحط رجلي أحط رجلي أيوة أيوة أوكي أي أول شيء أفك الساعة وبعدين افصلوا عنا البطاريه خلاص ما ضل ما يظلوا لزوم خالص My palms are sweaty. How are you not scared? How my heart was going like this the whole time you were up there. ما شعوري عادي كان ميت عمل اللي شيء شفته اللي شلت الأطفال وشفت العالم الميتين وشلتهم يعني كل ما أشيل طفل كل ما أشيل رجل كل ما أشيل كذا قلبي ما عاد أتحمل.
This was Raqqa up until just eight months ago. The city shot to international infamy when it was declared capital of the Islamic State in 2014. Raqqa soon became one of the most fear-ridden places on earth, with the religious police oppressing civilians, barbaric methods of torture, mass public executions, and enforced recruitment into the caliphate. But last June, the battle to retake Raqqa from ISIS began. Led by the Syrian Democratic Forces, or SDF, and supported by airstrikes from a US-led military coalition. For four months, missiles rained on Raqqa, eventually driving out and defeating the caliphate. The SDF took control of the city. But it was a brutal victory that left 80% of the city uninhabitable. This is the center of the city where you can see just enormous levels of destruction. I mean, almost every single building is crumpled and falling in on itself. At the same time, you can see people starting to move back. I mean, some of these shops have already opened pretty optimistically and people are starting to rebuild their lives. back into a neighborhood that has completely changed. How long have you been gone for? Why did you leave? قدرت الرقم كان داعش هنا وكان في ضغط علينا وكمان صارت الطائرات تضرب ما عندنا حسن وعندنا اولاد وعندنا اطفال وعندنا شو يعني في علينا احنا تشديد يعني واي واحد يحكي اي كلمه اي غلط اي شغله هيك يعني كمان اخته يقصوا له رغبته كمان يعني so this family are just moving into a rented home uh, because their own home is right here and it's completely destroyed and some of the family members are just stood crying in front of it. Do you think that there's a good future for young Raqqa people? The battle to defeat ISIS is a global one. Those like 19-year-old Taleb have been left struggling to deal with what remains and questioning who will help them rebuild their lives. But for many that we met, physical destruction was the least of their concerns. One of the biggest grievances of so many people that we've spoken to here in Raqqa is that they're still missing family members who were taken by ISIS and they haven't been able to locate their whereabouts ever since. We're just about to meet one of those cases. Shukran. What happened to Mohammed, your husband and your son? تاريخ 16/5 يوم ثلاثاء الساعة 8 تقريبا بالليل دق الباب طلع فتحوا فاتوا شخصين بلشوا تفتيش بالغرف بعدين اخذوا معهم على اساس نص ساعة او بكره الصبح ويرجع ومن يومها ما رجع تقريبا صار له سنة وخمس وخمس ايام ما نعرف عنه شيء Who came to this house to arrest him? ملثمين جالي قبضات من داعش 
When ISIS came to your house, what charges did they arrest him with? What makes you so certain that your son is alive? He's very handsome. How can you recognize him? He's so far back. This is his son? Adnan. Iman shows us what's left of the home she used to share with Mohammed. What happened here? So if Mohammed ever does make it back, how do you think he's going to feel coming home to this? That really puts things in perspective. Monet is one of thousands of people here searching for any sign of their missing loved ones. But as the months roll on, the chances of finding anyone alive here are dwindling. Unknown numbers of bodies lie rotting under piles of rubble. Others are being dug up from mass graves across the city. طبعاً هذه مقبرة جماعية تم الكشف عليها عن طريق بلاغ الأهالي. حالياً نحن فريق انتشال الجثث. How many bodies have you uncovered from these mass graves so far around Raqqa? طبعاً نحن بشرنا عمل في تسعة واحد ألفين وثمنتاعش لحد هذا اليوم طالعنا سبعمية وسبعة وستين جثة لحد الآن. هذه المقبرة الجماعية التقدير الأولي للعدد من ثلاثمائة وخمسين جثة إلى خمسمائة جثة. Are you able to do any forensics testing on them? لا طرق بدائية. بس تعرفهم ممكن ما كل إنه هاي بي بيمكن أم وابنها مع بعض. هاي. So this is a woman. نعم هذه إمرأة. نحطها بإضبارة إذا تعرف عليها حدا من أهلها نقدر نحنا نعطيها ثوب أخضر سجل لي. It seems like an impossible task to hope to identify any of these bodies really. طبعا أهلا يقدرون يعرفونها عن طريق اللباس أو على طريقة حتى الأسنان يعني الأسنان أو عن طريق شيء يعني بالإيد كسر أو كذا يتعرفون عليها. Are most of these bodies that you're finding killed by the airstrikes or killed by ISIS? والله أنا صراحة ما تابعت التقارير الأخيرة بالنسبة للقتلة بس يعني الشيء اللي وضح الفريقنا إنه أكثر الشيء جاي يطلع معانا اللي تبين إنه المدنيين أكثر من قتلة داعش. How often are family members coming here and actually recognizing these bodies? نعم نحن باشرنا المقبرة من شهر سلمت أنا من هذه المقبرة ستين جثة للأهالي. With no forensic tools and little international backing, a very small percentage of recovered bodies are ever reunited with family members. 
The remaining bodies are simply reburied at other cemeteries. أمي وأختي مدفونات هنا وجيت أطالع على المقابر الجماعية. توفن أمي وأختي بالحصار ضربتهن الطيارة. Did you find her today? لا. اللي شهر أجي عشرين يوم. كنا يفتحون المقبرة ما ألاقي شيء. Who do you blame for your sister's death? طيران. بس اليوم الطيران ليش جاء؟ بسبب داعش. لو مو داعش ما جاء الطيران. But this woman's surviving sister isn't so forgiving towards the coalition and their airstrikes. These grievances were something we heard over and over. Last month, Amnesty International released a damning report accusing the coalition, particularly U.S. forces, of disproportionate and indiscriminate airstrikes and artillery attacks during the battle for Raqqa. The monitoring group Air Wars estimates these strikes killed at least 1,500 civilians. But the U.S. military only claims responsibility for less than 500 civilian deaths across Afghanistan, Yemen, Iraq, and Syria combined last year. When asked about this discrepancy, a spokesman for the DOD told Vice that the coalition relies on information gathered from media and social media reports, information we receive from organizations like Air Wars and Human Rights Watch, as well as operational logs to determine if the reported instance of civilian casualty is credible. He also told us it is a tragedy that any civilian was part of this war to rid ISIS from the world and pointed out that the coalition takes full responsibility for any action harming civilians during operations. But let us not forget the tens of thousands of Iraqis and Syrians, including women and children, that ISIS killed. And the reason for all this military action is ISIS. Yet they do acknowledge they don't know the true toll. How do we know how many civilians were killed? I'm just being honest, no one will ever know. Anyone who claims they will know is lying, and there is no possible way. The battle to rid Syria of the final remnants of ISIS is continuing in the northernmost part of the country. Meanwhile, thousands of their fighters have been captured and are now in SDF custody, among them hundreds of foreigners. The most notorious, Alexander Koti and El Shafi El Sheikh, half of the four-person British ISIS cell known as the Beatles. Koti and El Sheikh are in a secretly located jail in northern Syria. With the British government refusing to take them back, they're now stuck in a political limbo. Alexander, the State Department has stated that you likely engaged in the group's executions and exceptionally cruel torture methods, including electric shock and waterboarding. El Shafi, they've said about you that you earned a reputation for waterboarding, mock executions and crucifixions yeah. while serving as an ISIS jailer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you deny that? Of course I deny that. What does that mean? <laughs> Known for crucifixions. So that, just explain that to me. What was your role within the Islamic State? That is something that can be discussed in a legal platform. Not here. I mean, there are thousands of families who are desperately searching for any signs of their loved ones who were taken by the Islamic State. Do you have any regrets over the level of executions, torturing, beheadings that took place there? Oh, look, the Islamic State police force or the judicial system is not exactly the most transparent in terms of what happens to the person after arrest. And do you denounce that now? Denounce what? Go to law? Do you denounce the fact that there were countless executions and beheadings taking place under the Islamic State? I support Islamic law. Fully, anything from God's law, I support it 100%. I, what I experienced then, Islamic State, wasn't uh, what is uh, widely uh, broadcasted in uh, Western media. Uh, I shared good moments and, and I met some of the best people uh, that I might ever meet uh, while I was there. You can understand, though, how upsetting that must be for people who have had so much hurt inflicted on them by the Islamic State, and then to see you sitting here talking about a lack of remorse and talking about the good times you had there. What concerns me, what I care about, is the bodies that are still lying underneath the rubble from the coalition air raids. Well, I mean, arguably, that was as a reaction to what was going on by the Islamic State in Raqqa. Yeah, but it came at a hefty price. People don't lose sleep about that, right? 
People are not up at night wondering, is there more civilians being killed in Syria? Has the death toll risen? I mean, Trump orders these strikes, and the only thing that keeps him up is to make some mundane tweet at one in the morning, right? Do you think that those airstrikes have helped the cause of the Islamic State? Of course, uh, this is something that they themselves, they know. With thousands of ISIS fighters now imprisoned in a non-sovereign Kurdish state, the stability of northern Syria hinges on American support. What do you think is at stake for you guys and for the situation at large if the US does leave this region? The fact that this is a volatile uh, region, you know, leaves so many uh, possibilities. And these prisons could be attacked by uh, Islamic State forces uh, to free prisoners, uh, which wouldn't be a good look for America. We spent the last day with a woman called Monet, whose son was arrested by the Islamic State on suspicion of collaborating with the coalition. Um, I actually want to show you a picture of him because I don't know if you recognize him or not. This man. No. No. What do you think happened to Mohammed? What do you think happened to these thousands of people who were kidnapped by the Islamic State? Uh, I would imagine if it was proven that he was collaborating with the coalition, I would imagine he would have been executed. Back in Raqqa, Monet hasn't given up hope that her son Mohammed is still alive. Today, she's meeting with a top military police commander in the hopes he may have some answers. <laughs> So you're saying that Mone's son is most likely dead? أنا ما بدي أجرح أنا قلت له ما بدي أجرح بالكلام بس مية بالمية لأنه أنا اليوم كنت بالرقة ومعمقات اللي بتعرير الرقة أعرف داعش الشي يسوي يعني مجموعة مجموعة من الأهالي حاولت تنهزم وحصروهن بمنطقة لأنه عم ينهزموا ركضوا العالم تيتخبوا من الدواعش بالبنايات يشيلوا الأطفال والرجال والنساء ويزتوهن من البنايات صار بس بده يذبح هو شغلته جاي تايذبح فورا يقتله وخلص ما في بحث ثاني جاء إن شاء الله تلاقي ابنك وما ذال قلبك جاي يقول لك إنه طيب إن شاء الله طيب
For the last six months, Monet has been traveling around the region to ask authorities about her missing son. But her loneliest mission, and maybe her last hope, is literally scouring the walls of Raqqa's most infamous ISIS prisons, hoping she may find a message from her son somewhere inside. It's just so indescribably heartbreaking to watch Monet go from room to room of one of hundreds of prisons, just searching for any clues that feels like searching for a needle in a haystack. Careful, this hasn't been cleared of mines. But say him can how we What does it say? Actofia no mam no yet kellama hada. While the war in Syria has left many with wounds that will never heal, above the very same jail where Monet was searching, some in Raqqa are trying to reclaim a semblance of normal life, like Taleb, who's now playing football above the very place where he too was once an ISIS prisoner.